Mersey Girls, or as they auditioned as, Just Us. They were an all-female dance group consisting of Julia, Anna, Alice, Rebecca and Poppy. They auditioned back in 2017 where Julia, the lead dancer, revealed that she had scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine. A very heartfelt and touching story. She had mentioned she needed surgery and after the surgery she wouldn't be able to dance, so this would be her last time to do it. Touched the nation's heart. Here's what they look like and here is a little clip of what the audition looked like. Pretty cool, eh? The audition to Fight Song by Rachel Platten. Also, it was Alicia Dixon that gave them their golden buzzer, their little ticket to the ticket to the semi-finals. But where are they now? What happened afterwards? You know, this was 2017. What's that? Five, five years ago? They were all pretty young at the time. What happened then? Are they still dancing together? Are they not? Have they gone their separate ways? What happened? Well, I've done all the research for you. So it appears that after the show had finished, Julia went on to get that surgery that she spoke about, the um, scoliosis surgery. It cost £175,000. Interestingly enough, the whole thing was paid for by Simon Cowell. You see, you can't get that kind of surgery on the NHS, so it comes out of your own pocket. But Simon Cowell paid for that. Whether or not that was him being nice or whether that was kind of publicity, I don't know. But a super nice thing to do anyway. I'm thinking of Julia, she seems not to be the lead in this, but the whole thing and the whole kind of success is based around her. I mean, she's the one with the sob story here, so she's the one that's kind of got that memorable attribute. Not long after the surgery, the Mersey Girls returned on Britain's Got Talent, The Champions, where it revealed Julia dancing and doing backflips and all kinds of things that she weren't meant to be able to do after the surgery. So great success. And they were really good dancers as well. Really good dancers. Judging by the research I've done, her socials, this is what she looks like now. And she seems to be trying a hand at acting, trying to move away from the dancing into more of an acting career. She still dances, but she's definitely focusing more on acting now. As for the other girls in the group, hard to find what they're up to. Very difficult. It doesn't appear that all of them are dancing still as the Mersey girls. They all seem to be doing their own little thing. All of them are still dancing, don't get me wrong, but not to that kind of success level as we've seen on Britain's Got Talent before. You know, they're not quite at that diversity level yet. But emphasis on the word yet. They're all still very young. Now, before we get on to the next act, let me just tell you who I am and what you're watching. My name is Cameron and you're watching Not So Clueless, the show where I aim to make you a little less useless in all things clueless, whether that be history, mystery or more art and beauty, pop culture or reality TV, I'm here to make you a little bit useless, you know, trigger that little nostalgia button in your brain and just kill off some of the time in your day, you know. But anyway, on to person number two. Second up, we have Baz and Melody. Baz and Melody are a singing and rap duo who came third on season eight of Britain's Got Talent and they received Simon Cowell's golden buzzer and as such, advanced right to the semi-finals. Here's what bars look like, aka Leandre, and here is what Melody look like, aka Charla. And this is what they look like now. <laughs> Quite a lot different, right? I mean, they're still noticeable. You can see them side by side, boop, boop. And you can say, okay, that's bars, that's Melody, I get it. But they have changed quite a lot, haven't they? Keep in mind, this is eight years later, so they're no longer kids anymore. Charlie, that one there, Melody, he has a kid now. So what actually happened within those eight years? Well, after the show, even though they didn't win, they did sign a record deal with Simon Cowell worth £500,000. That's half a million pounds. Baz and Melody's first album, which was called Hopeful, got a respectable number five in the official charts. Their second album, Teen Spirit, was released September 2014 and peaked at number 43 in the charts. Was their third album, Generation Z, released in September 2017, peaked at number 83. So not good, there was a little downfall, but I mean 83 in the charts, that's still rapidly 
high, but there was a little bit of downfall since coming out of Britain's Got Talent for the years that followed. They also came back to compete in Britain's Got Talent, the champions, which looked like this. And interestingly enough, in 2017, they ran into a bit of drama whilst on a European tour in Germany where their manager was held at gunpoint when they was outside a supermarket. I think they went in to get a drink or something and the manager was held at gunpoint because the tour bus was blocking the highway. I don't really know, but a little bit of drama. There was a bit more drama as well. Leandre's father, Antonio, actually filed a lawsuit to sue them. The lawsuit against the duo was claiming that Hopeful was his song written about troubles he was having in his life. He said he was unhappy that the pair moved away and that he was responsible for promoting Bars and Melody prior to their appearance on Britain's Got Talent. But they're still doing their thing, they're still doing music. They've got a tour in 2023 called the Stay Frosty Tour. That looks pretty interesting. They're still releasing videos. They seem to be in a good place where they're not clinging on to Britain's Got Talent, but they're also not just forgetting it entirely. You know, check out the YouTube. They're still releasing music videos like this one here. So they're still doing their thing. Really interestingly, I was checking out the socials and the YouTube. About one week ago, they released a Q&A where they answer all these questions. Some about Britain's Got Talent, mainly just about them. You know, if you want a good wrap up on how their life has been since Britain's Got Talent, just check out that Q&A because you hear them talking about things like touring, Britain's Got Talent and life as it is now. So that's really interesting to watch just to see how much that they've grown. But they seem to be doing their thing. You know, they're still together. It's still a duo. They don't seem to be breaking up anytime soon. They seem to be making it pretty well. Next up, we have a back shot, which is this guy here. Here's what he looked like on Britain's Got Talent. He was a dancer who reached the semi-finals on season 13. He was Ant and Dex, golden buzzer. Now, the interesting thing about him is that he had quite the career before Britain's Got Talent. Even though he was 13 when he auditioned, he still had this whole career prior to that, that people found out people were a little bit outraged at this, you know, I'm not gonna lie, people were a little bit mad. In 2011, he appeared on a show called Dance Bangla Dance. He even later went on to appear on a show called Dance India Dance. And later in 2011, he was on the Alan DeGeneres show. You know, here's what he did, you might have seen him before. Right? It looks familiar, doesn't it? That was a viral video. He was already viral. You have a look at him and think, oh yeah, actually, on Britain's Got Talent, he does look pretty familiar, and that's why. He's the same kid as that guy, just a few years later. Even in 2014, he appeared on both India's Got Talent and the Indian version of Strictly Come Dancing. And he's acted. He's been in some Bollywood movies before as well. Not to mention, 2017, he appeared on the Australian version of Little Big Shorts, where he did this. This is my pizza, this is my burger, and this is my chicken. <laughs> East or West? Food is the best. <laughs> Which was another viral video. You might remember it. Remember this one? That's him as well. So fairly, when people found out this, there was a bit outraged. I mean, here are some of the tweets. Now, people um, thought they had been duped a little bit. So it's difficult to say what he's done since the show, as the show hasn't really made him a success. He was already a success way before doing Britain's Got Talent. So anything he does after that, you can't really account to, oh, that's because he got the golden buzzer on Britain's Got Talent. You know, it's not really in the same ballpark. It's a different thing. Anyway, since then, I can't really find out much about what he's doing recently. He doesn't seem to be doing that much. However, just after Britain's Got Talent, we had this little kind of pandemic thing. You might have remembered it. That kind of stunned a lot of people's success, especially the people who was on Britain's Got Talent just before the pandemic hit they didn't really have a chance to go big you know you've got like a couple of years after the show maybe just like one year where you can really hone in on that success after that people really start forgetting you unless you've done something big so all these people who was on the show just before the pandemic and had like a year where they weren't allowed to do anything they couldn't really stay in people's mind but i'm sure he's going to continue doing things i looked around i interestingly enough i found a more recent video of him from a year ago doing a TEDx talk, which is really interesting. Maybe check that out, which of course he finishes by dancing. Next up, we got Don Chez Dacles. He was a singer who reached the final of series 12 of Britain's Got Talent, which was in 2018 when he was 60 years old. And he also received David Walliams' golden buzzer. 
After that, in 2018, Donchess released his single, Wiggle Wine, which was hoping to contend with number one in the charts. And I remember a lot of articles coming out and the research I've done, a lot of articles coming out when it was saying, Wiggle Wine might get number one this year, it might get number one. Unfortunately, it failed to even place in the top 100. So not a great success, kind of down heartening on that. But he kept at it, he did keep at it. Later on, he released Wiggle Wine, the album, which had all of his songs on, including Wiggle Wine, which, are, which he had already released, as, a, as well as a few others. Let me read those out for you. Pretty Little Lady, Only A Man, It Ain't Over, Long Time Gal, Jamaican Holiday, Gal, Gal Them A Trend, Big Butt Lizzie, and Mabe. Since then, after checking out his socials, he seems to just be doing more events and festival type things. Not really releasing any new music, but just playing some of the ones he's already written before. Ah, well, yeah, events and festivals. This is what it looks like now. Not much going on, once again. Next up, we got number five, Lauren Alred. She was a singer who placed ninth in season 15 of Britain's Got Talent, which was in 2022. So very recent. In fact, it was the last show. So it's very difficult to say what she's done since the show, since the show was so recent, she hasn't had much of a chance. I could tell you from looking at her socials and doing a bit of research, she's been pretty active. You know, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, new videos, new music, content creation, just keeping things fresh and trying to get that ball rolling. But that's about all I can comment on that. What I can say is what she did during the show and what she did before it. So during the show, and this is what she looked like, she did her rendition of Never Enough from The Greatest Showman. And I, I use that lightly, her rendition, because what we found out was in the actual movie, when they sing Never Enough from The Greatest Showman, you know, that lady does it, yeah? Remember her? Remember that? Sick film, great song. Well, that was actually her. That was actually Lauren. That's not her voice, that's Lauren's voice. She was the actual woman who did that. She came on Britain's Got Talent, tired of being in the background, this is kind of what she'd done, was this vocals, backing vocals, that kind of thing. She wanted to shine, so she did, you know, Never Enough, the song that she already sang in the film, and she did that on stage, obviously. It was brilliant, obviously. She received a golden buzzer. And although I can't speak about what she's done much after, I can speak about what she's done before. So I found out that 2017, she was on America's version of The Voice. She was in Adam Levine's team and made it to the top 20. This is what she looked like during The Voice. I also found out she's got an IMDB page. And when I was looking on it, I seen that she's credited 2021, Dear Evan Hansen, as in the music department. So I'm not sure what she's done on that film, but she has in some way been a part of that film, which was another really good musical. Sean, very interesting. Next up, we got number six, which is Mark Spellman. He reached the semi-finals of season 12 of Britain's Got Talent, which was 2018. And he was Ant and Dec's golden buzzer. Here's what he looked like. He was a magician. Also, I'm not sure if that's his real surname, Mark Spellman. But if it is, it's very ironic, isn't it? Because he's a magician and his surname is Spellman. Spellman. Very interesting. Hmm. Anyway, he's got a very interesting story as well as an interesting name. Because after the show, in 2019, he returned to Britain's Got Talent, concealing his identity. He came back as Magician X. You may remember X. It was really good. He was a magician who covered his face. Nobody knew who he was. People were saying, oh, is it Ant? Is it Deck? Maybe it's Stephen Mulhern. Who could this magician be? And we found out in the finals when he revealed his, his face, he pulled his mask off, that it was Mark Spellman from the year before, and he had been planning this magician X thing for a very long time. Since then, people have kind of thought, well, maybe he'll return again for a third version. In the last season of Britain's Got Talent, we've seen the witches, which look like this. A lot of people thought that could have been Mark Spellman, or at least one of them could have been Mark Spellman. But I think they ended up getting that squished. I think it was proven they kind of want him. Either way, he said it wanted him, and there was no reveal. But we'll never know. What I do know is he's been leaning more into the Magician X thing and been doing a lot of shows under that character. And very interestingly, very interestingly, I was just checking out his socials to see what he's doing in more recent times. And he posted this photo here with this caption, reading that something big's coming. 
something big's coming to TV. Very interesting. And this was only a couple of days ago. So we are yet to see the end of Mark Spellman and Magician X. Then we get to number seven, we have Callum Scott. Now, Callum Scott has got to be one of the most successful acts on Britain's Got Talent. In fact, probably not one of the most. He probably is the most, you know. He's up there with some of the biggest names to come out of the show. He auditioned in 2015 with a slowed down version of Dancing On My Own by Robin. So let me just read to you some of these achievements since the show, okay, right? We have 2016, the year after the show, he released a cover of Robin's Dancing On My Own, which he did in the show. It peaked number two and spent 30 weeks in the official top 40, marking his first ever top single, or top five single, should I say. His second single, Rhythm Inside, peaked at 90, not as good, but still in the top 100. He released another single, You Are The Reason, which peaked at number 43 and spent 14 weeks in the top 100. He also did a version of that with Leona Lewis. 2018, he released his debut album called Only Human, which peaked number four and spent eight weeks in the official album chart top 100. In winter 2020, he returned to Britain's Got Talent as part of the Christmas Spectacular and performed his song, You Are The, you Are the Reason, live alongside a performance from Mersey Girls. Remember Mersey Girls? They're who we covered first. He performed with them. Then in late July 2021, he featured on Lost Frequencies' new single entitled Where Are You Now? In mid-October of the same year, he entered the official chart top 191 before peaking at number three. Basically, he has done a lot. I mean, a lot, a lot. And a lot of it has been very successful. His YouTube channel's got like 6.2 million subscribers. His song, You Are The Reason, has over 900 million views on it. Number eight, we have Honey and Sammy. Now this is a very interesting one because there was a mother and daughter act. They made the semi-finals during season 14 of Britain's Got Talent, which was in 2020. And that ages was 14, that's Honey, and 43, that is Sammy. Here's a little clip of what they look like then and their audition. It was a very good audition. But the reason it's so interesting is singing with your mum when you're 14 you know, I ain't that bad. It's pretty cool. But you're at that age where you're kind of getting older and you don't want to be doing this mother and daughter thing anymore. You know? It starts becoming... You're at that age where, especially if you're in the music industry, you kind of want to go off on your own and do your own thing, which is why it's so interesting to look in and kind of figure out, okay, well, where are they now? Are they still performing as a couple? And they're not. I think she has gone off on her own. Recently, she's released a new song, Runaway. Here's a little clip of what that looks like, a little video of what it looks like. And there's, there doesn't seem to be any bad blood there between her going off on her own. You know, her mum probably promotes this stuff more than she does. Her mum doesn't seem to sing anymore she's just doing her own little thing supporting her daughter's journey which is really nice actually it's her mum could easily cling on and say no you ain't going nowhere let's continue this but it's good that she's letting her go out and kind of try her own thing that's really good and the single runaway didn't really get that many it doesn't really seem to be that much of a success on youtube it's got like just over three thousand views which isn't an awful lot, which is a shame as well, because if you listen to it, it's a really good song. You know, I urge you to go listen to it. It's a nice song. It deserves more attention than that. But she still seems to be doing her thing. Um, she's posting a lot on TikTok, so it seems. Doing a lot of music things on there, just a lot of tiktok -y stuff, which is doing good. She's got over 100,000 followers, so I suppose that's successful. Not massive in music yet. However, I've got a good feeling about this. Keep in mind, she's only 17, so she's got a long journey ahead of her and a long time to get some successful music out there. I really think we have not seen the last of Honey just yet. I really think she could be a big success. So watch this space. Now, number nine, we have Reformed. They're a female singing group who received Alicia Dixon's golden buzzer and reached the semi-finals on season eight of Brains Got Talent, which was 2014. The group consisted of Renetta, who was aged 18, Ebony, who was aged 15, and Alexis, who was aged 21. But where are they now? What happened? Well, in 2015, so a year after Britain's Got Talent, 
Renetta and Ebony, they auditioned for The X Factor as a duo under the name Pretty Young Thing or PTY. No Alexis. There was also, interestingly, nothing posted on the reformed socials. They had a Twitter, they had an Instagram. Nothing was posted on there after 2015. So it appeared the two younger girls kind of went off to do a duo and forgot and just moved away from well, the older girl, Alexis. However, in 2021, Alexis appeared on the UK's Married at First Sight. And correct me if I'm wrong, but if anyone watched that, she never mentioned anything about BGT. In fact, I watched that whole season and it's only now when I'm researching this that I found out that that is the same person as that person. I did not even know. She seemed to have just put that behind her and just poof, went on. I watched that whole show. Never once did she mention Britain's Got Talent. Not that I can remember anyway. She's now 28, 29. She works as a model now. She looks like this. And once again, looking through socials, even though she mentions things about Married at First Sight and other stuff she's doing, it never mentions Britain's Got Talent which is strange, right? So maybe there was some bad blood there. I've read an article that during the time they were in Britain's Got Talent, she was asking people not to vote for her because a year later she got busted trying to smuggle cannabis into a prison, hid into a bra to try and give it to her prison boyfriend at the time. She said it was like a big mistake, but she got busted for that. So I'm not sure if all that made the other girls want to go off and do their own thing because they knew it might be a bit difficult working with her or whether she just wanted to put the whole thing behind her and just moved on on her own. But either way, she's modelling, she's doing her thing. As for the other girls, they don't seem to be doing anything nowadays anyway. They just seem to be living normal lives, staying out of the entertainment industry altogether. And finally, we have Paddy and Nico, who was a salsa dancing duo on season eight of Britain's Got Talent and received Amanda's golden buzzer. As for what happened after the show, they seem to still be dancing and still be dancing as a couple, but kind of just doing the Got Talent circuit. You know, 2015, a year later, they appeared on Germany's Got Talent doing the exact same thing, where they also received golden buzzer, so pretty much the exact same thing. Then they came back for Britain's Got Talent, the champions. Then they went to America for America's Got Talent, the champions. Then. In 2021, they was on Spain's Got Talent, where they reached the semi-finals of that. It also came out that before Britain's Got Talent, they won some Spanish dancing competition show where it's similar to Britain's Got Talent. It's called 2CQ, and they was on that, and they won like 10,000 euros, which outraged a lot of people. Simon Cowell had their side and said, oh no, it's Paddy, she wants to come and dance for a UK crowd for a British crowd instead of a Spanish crowd or something like that. But they seem to just be making a good living, making good money, going around to all these different Got Talent shows and just doing the same old act, really. But hey, whatever works for them, I guess. And with that, we've come to the end of this What, Who and Where Are They Now? from the most unforgettable golden buzzer acts of Britain's Got Talent. Like I said, I've already done the same one for America's Got Talent, so check out that video please and please do like comment save all that stuff it really does help me out quite a lot and it makes all the effort that goes into this video quite worthwhile